What's up guys? Welcome to the Heroic Siege of Nauzu Temple, the healing guide, okay? Uh, for this encounter, it's really not a big deal. This is the first boss encounter of the fight. Um, you do have to go through quite a bit of trash to get there. Uh, a little bit annoying, but it's okay. Um, as soon as you get to this boss, this boss has a couple of different abilities all scrolling up top of your head. It'll be like that for each boss. Um, but for this boss, all you're really doing is making sure that um, there's two different ways to heal this. Okay, so you can have your group either kind of go in and hit the puddle, keep it down, and then they're going to take ticks. And as they take ticks, their damage increase will go up higher and higher. It starts off extremely small. Um, in this heroic mode, so you really could have someone in there for quite a while, probably getting up to, I would say, 10 to 15 stacks, because then it's going to start hitting for about 40 to 45k. Um, not a big deal that way, okay? Um, but that would be my recommendation, and then switch out. Otherwise, if you want, you can literally just, if you have the DPS to do it, just pop down the puddles or the globules as they come out, and then when it gets to the center, just make sure you have uh, AOE cooldown ready to heal, and you can pretty much just sit there and burn through them. You want to kite the boss to the outer edge. Um, you're pretty much just keeping your dots on the tank the whole time, and um, as soon as the globule in the middle comes out, like right now, um, everyone burns it down as soon as it's burned down. It does a lot of AOE damage, then you just make sure you have an AOE cooldown ready. Um, any damage mitigation cooldowns that you might have as a healing class, that would be a good time to throw them out. And then just make sure that you can heal everybody up quick. Um, again, anything you can throw on the tank during that phase to kind of make sure that they don't take a brunt of the damage. Because the other people really won't take a whole lot of damage that entire fight. So it's mainly just making sure that you have a quick burst heal to throw on everybody and you're good to go. Okay, this fight, the second fight of the heroic dungeon... Um, it's really, really a long fight, but however, it's very, very fun. Um, I actually didn't realize how long it was until I was making this video, but it does take a long time for this boss to come up. What happens is, is this boss fight is an encounter where you play a tower defense game, okay? So what you're doing is you're throwing down these little pools, um, these little balls onto the ramp so that it slows the enemies and adds, um, it adds a damage increase that they take. So the best way to do this, especially as a healer, is you're not going to have much to do um, for the first little while of the fight until the ads come up and get tanked um, all together. The only thing that you have to worry about really is just making sure that these puddles are getting put down so that the ads will run into them. That really should be your main job as a healer. And then as soon as the ads come up, make sure that you're cycling onto the tank. As you can see here, at this point I'm not even healing the tank and that's how little damage he's taking just due to the fact that these guys don't hit hard and heroic. Um, now for challenge mode, obviously I'll probably have to stop and readjust a little bit, but for the heroic mode, not a big deal. All you really have to do is just make sure that you're throwing your puddles, keep some hots on the tank, um, you know, throw them a heal every now and then, keep them topped off, you know, if you're a priest, keep a shield on them. Um, and that's really all you really need to do. Um, and the, the trick is the next group of ads you can see right here are called destroyers. Now we had a shaman in our group, um, an elemental shaman who could literally just chain lightning them and they would explode. Um, so the goal is in this phase, you don't want these guys to make it up the stairs because they will hurt you. So if you can have a ranged focus these guys down, that's going to be his main job. Um, he'll kill them before they even get close. As you can see here, there's nothing to do. Um, the only other part that will bring out damage is you'll have this flying guy come in. Um, what you want to do is make sure that you have your DPS burn that down as quick as possible. Um, and just heal any damage through that. He does throw out little spikes on the ground, but as you can see, even um, looks like that hunter stood right in it, and it didn't even really hurt him. I think it took him down maybe 20k. So it's not a big deal at this point. The damage is not um, huge on challenge or on this mode at all on heroic. So don't worry about that. However, this fight is a lot of fun. Okay, so now we're getting through the third phase of the ads. Um, now there's a warrior coming. Now this guy has a ton of health and does actually hit decently hard um, depending on how quickly you can burn him down and then obviously you see the birds are still incoming too so I can see how in challenge modes this fight is going to be really really difficult um, however in heroic it's pretty much make sure you burn down that the tank picks up the big guy you're burning down those birds because they do throw out random damage um, just pools so unless you're really good at avoiding those it's easier just to burn them down especially in a pug and then have your um, DPS switch over to the warrior as this um, last kind of row of tower defense is going off right now. You can see the warrior, you can see the little guys. You can see that our shaman and all our DPS are sitting on the edge, helping out, DPSing them as much as they can, 
through the ads um, and then as you can see now in the background the boss is now starting to come out okay this is the important part um, the trick with this boss is you want to leave some of these little uh, these little melons all over you want to leave some of those available for you especially as a healer it's going to be your job really to do it because it's going to depend on how hard you can heal um, what happens is is if if he's not in one of these puddles he gains attack speed um, and power and so he will literally hit faster and harder and faster and harder and faster and harder until you physically can't heal through it anymore and then he does a blade storm um, the lucky thing for us is we had all ranged DPS, so the only person who got hit by the blade storm was the tank, which was irrelevant. It didn't really matter. Um, but as you can see here, I'm throwing a globule because you see how hard the tank's getting hit. Um, so now I've slowed down his attack speed, he's back down to normal. The tank kites him away so that I have a chance to get back, get him back up, and we're good to go. We're back all right. As you can see, it, it does get a little hectic there for a minute. Um, that would be when I should have blown a couple cooldowns probably, but I didn't. Um, not a big deal there. Again, in heroic mode, you do have a lot of forgiveness. Um, there is going to be quite a bit more strategy going into these challenge modes, um, but as just for this heroic, um, for healing, like I said, it's mainly keep your dots on your tank, uh, make sure that you're resetting the boss's stacks, or at least leaving a puddle out there so that the tank can kite him into it, as you see right there. Resetting his stacks, making it extremely easy to kill this boss because he does have a lot of health. Um, having that damage increase to the boss is huge. Um, as you can see now, he's really starting to melt down a little bit, and it's pretty much GG at this point. But this fight was a lot of fun. Um, it actually it, it keeps you involved the entire time, even though it is a little bit long. That's okay. Um, just make sure that you're conserving your mana as much as possible, because this last phase, like you can see, I'm going through a little bit of mana, keeping him up. Um, so, But that's all there is. The third fight. Um, probably one of my favorite fights in Mist so far in Heroic Dungeons. It took us about two or three tries to figure this out exactly how it works, but once you figure it out, it's extremely easy. Um, all you're really doing is, as a healer, you're you're staying with the tank, okay? Um, I mean, you're staying spread out until he goes into his bubble phase. Once he goes into his bubble phase, you want to stack up with the tank. The reason you want to do that is because you don't um, healer aggro, especially as a wrestler druid, is a pain. And when the boss doesn't move, if you're way over, if you're way on the left and the boss is in his bubble way on the right, it's not going to do you any good. Um, you're going to have ads coming to you. He's the tank's not going to be able to taunt him off. Um, it's just a real pain in the butt. And the other thing is, is, if you keep them all balled up, when the DPS throws the bombs at at the um, at the globe to break down his shield and to it increases damage too. So those ads drop like a fly. Um, and the boss is taking increased damage. Now the boss will do this twice. So as you can see here, the biggest thing that you're doing is as my healer, I'm just stacking up, I'm throwing down my Ursal's Vortex, I'm throwing down my Mass Entanglement, any Mass AoE um, hold abilities or crowd control abilities that you have are huge here. As soon as they get in that ball, and as soon as the tank has aggro, throw them out. Because anything you can do to keep these guys here is just like, I mean, do you see how fast they literally instantly die? If they're in there if they're not in there we tried the, the first time we had no idea we just tried to power through it and said screw it it did not I mean we, we it ended up being about a 14 minute fight before we wiped because we had so many ads and we were trying so many different things to get them down you just can't do that you got to do it this way it's the quickest way to do it it'll make the fight go by so much faster as you can see he's already in his second phase he's taking a ton of damage so all I do is just stack up with the tank again um, I've got my Ursula's Vortex going out, my Mass Entanglement going out, that's all I need, I'm good to go, and it's simple, simple. And also this guy does drop probably your best in slot trinket um, as a healer. He does drop your best in slot trinket until you get into raids. It is a 847 int with an on you spirit proc, okay? And the spirit proc is decent. Um, I ended up winning it from this guy. Um, and it, it's, it's an incredible, incredible trinket. You're really going to want to get this before you go into raids. It's huge for your mana conservation. Um, but that's the third fight. Really, really cool. We even got the achievement for it um, by the time we killed it because we figured out how to do it. So it was really, really fun to do. The last boss in this encounter, and again, this encounter is a little bit longer than the other ones in Mist, but that's okay. Um, he does have some really cool abilities. Uh, the main thing you're going to want to do is make sure that any, if you have any movement speed increases, any group movement speed increases, any teleports, anything that you can use, make sure that you have them available for this fight. Because what he does is, it's very simple, he goes through 
and if you don't know what you're doing, he's gonna go to one end or the other based on the percentage of health. Um, you're gonna burn him down for a little bit, he's gonna switch over to the other percent, of, uh, to the other side of the room, and then all this wind's gonna come out, okay? So the next thing that you have to do is you're, you're popping your stampeding roar, you're using your portals, you're using your blinks, you're using anything that you have to make yourself go faster because what he's doing is as he's channeling these, you can't really move. So you're trying to get to him as fast as you possibly can so that you can interrupt that channel and DPS him down until he switches back to the other side and then it's rinse and repeat one more time. Uh, the only other things you really have to worry about in this fight are if he throws poo on the ground, you stay out of the poo on the ground. Blizzard 101, right? Um, that's really simple. And then the last mechanic is there'll be a mechanic at the end where if you, you'll have a bar above your head, you just spam jump until you get it and you're good to go. And that's all you have to do. Um, and this dungeon's done. So thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. Um, I will be putting out the rest of the videos shortly. I'm just getting some uh, good footage. It does take a little, little time to edit. Um, but I hope you like this first one. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you.